Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie. And I'm Aubrey. And we are two Americans currently living in Germany and sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. So we have a goal. While travel is slowly starting to open back up, we want to get to as many of the really high tourist attraction sites as possible before all the tourists starts flooding back in and it gets really busy. So today we are at one of the gyms of Germany, one of the highest on the tourist attraction list, Schloss Neuschwanstein. So today we have a main goal of getting to Neuschwanstein and we have a tour already booked that we're gonna go do. But first we wanted to get out into the nature. There are incredible mountains all around. So we're gonna go do some hikes to the mountains, try to catch some spectacular views and especially spectacular views of the castles. So come along and let's show you this incredible region of Germany. Here's a little teaser. One of the first hidden views of the castle. We are currently hiking up to the Tegelberg. If we make it to the very top, there's a gondola that we could take all the way back down. Our main goal right now is to make it about halfway to the Rohrkopfhütte and maybe stop and take in some views. But it's way steeper than we anticipated, but absolutely beautiful. I'm really glad we're doing a hike. And if you don't want to take a hike, you could always just take the gondola round trip. It was a little more expensive than we wanted to pay and we wanted to get out and do a little hike, but it probably is worth it. It's gorgeous. So I guess you can take it all the way up there. And obviously we're just here. I think what we saw was it's about three hours to hike up to the very top. In terms of taking just the actual Tegelberg Bahn up, I think that's just a matter of like a few minutes. I mean, it's whatever you want to do. If you have time and you want to prioritize uh, the hiking and just taking in the views and the nature the whole way, do the hike. But if you have to hurry back and get to a tour, which we have hours at 350, you're supposed to be there a little bit early. So we're kind of, it's about, we got started around 10 a.m. So we're kind of like in a weird spot where trying to figure out what we can do and get back in time and bus schedules and things like that. So we're going to do the hike, but it's really neat just already getting to see incredible views of the castles in the distance with the mountains as a backdrop. Hard to beat going this way. is beautiful. We had planned to go to another viewpoint later today, but this may suffice. This is gorgeous. Today is Saturday and we actually arrived Thursday evening. We have plans on doing a lot more stuff this weekend that are in kind of like the greater region here, like driving over to Garmisch and going up to the very top of Germany's tallest mountain, the Zugspitze. However, unfortunately on Thursday, coming down here, our car ended up having a lot of problems. We got kind of broken down. We had to get towed to a shop. They checked it out. They luckily said, we think you're good to continue on. So we did come down to Schwangau. So we didn't want to take the chance with driving our car to Garmisch and stuff. However, that allowed us to check out a lot more of this specific area. One of the things that I wanted to see is I had seen online a lot of people say when you come down here to stay in Fusen, but Aubrey ended up finding a place in Schwangau for us to stay. So between Schwangau and Fusen, these are not the only two places that you can stay here. There are a lot of other smaller places. So in order to give people better recommendations, for when they come down here. I wanted to go explore Fusen. And what we found was a really, really neat town. It seemed like it was the largest one down here, but lots of really cute buildings, an amazing church to go check out. Also like a castle at the top of the hill in the center of the town, lots of great cafes, lots of great shopping, but it was pretty touristy. And a lot of the hotels didn't seem like they had necessarily like quaint charm. I'm not saying I wouldn't recommend Fusen. It was very cool, definitely worth checking out. Maybe a great place for you to stay, but I really like staying in Schwangau, primarily just because it has a lot more of kind of like the alpine feel the way, with the way the architecture looks. But also like we love our little guest house that we're staying in and the breakfast that we have there is very German. And from our patio at our hotel, we have a great view of Neuschwanstein. And something that we've loved about Schwangau, you can just walk to Neuschwanstein in about like 40 minutes. I personally would highly recommend Schwangau if you're looking to stay in Fusen, Schwangau, or anything else in this area. So we made it to our goal of the Ruhrkopfhütte. 
and it's about an hour hike up the mountain and stopped at the hut for a beautiful view and just a cold drink to rest a little bit and it looks like their food is really good i don't think we're gonna get food yet i'm not hungry but it looks amazing i think we're gonna stop here and then after we rest for a little bit turn back the clouds are starting to roll in up at the top of the mountains and timeline wise for our tour of the castle we probably should start making our way back down but i would definitely recommend it it was very steep but if you're up for it it's really nice beautiful views So another awesome thing about staying in Schwangau, and we don't know why this is the case or what we did to deserve this, but we were given free bus tickets by our hotel when we checked in, and it seems like it's something done for people that are staying in Schwangau, tourists. So it may just be a common thing that a lot of people get, and it's not just specifically our hotel. And you may get it in like Fusen as well, but we honestly have no idea. It was just something that we were surprised by, but it's been awesome because we've been taking the buses all around the area, being able to go from Schwangau to Fusen, and then up here to do our hike this morning, and then out to Neuschwanstein with the free bus tickets, which have been very, very convenient. And all these places have parking lots, but you do have to pay for those parking spots. So we're able to park at our hotel and take the public buses everywhere we've been wanting to go for free. However, that's only if you catch the buses, which we did not catch the bus. We're trying to go back into town and there won't be one in time to get us to our tour, so we're walking back. But still, I mean, the views here are just incredible. Getting to see the fields leading up to the mountains and then the castles in the background. So this is hard to beat too, just getting to walk and enjoy this, even though we've already been walking for a few hours hiking and our legs are kind of exhausted and we're gonna be hiking more up to the castle, but it'll all be worth it. Another thing that we got to do yesterday was go to Forgensee and we kind of just walked around it a little bit, had a picnic next to it, and that was really nice. Probably wish we would have known about this hike yesterday though. We could have had longer to do that, but we were a little bit frazzled from our plans getting changed last minute. But now we're on our way to go see Neuschwanstein up close. So there are a lot of different ways of getting up to Neuschwanstein. We went up the paved way. There was some different hiking paths that you can go up as well, but it looked like some of the hiking paths were leading to the Marienbrücke, which I guess is like the view of the castle, but it's currently closed, so you can't get to it because of construction. So we didn't go up the hiking path, but just went up the paved path, and we were being passed by horse-drawn carriages and a lot of other different modes of getting up there. So we ended up getting up to the castle in about 20 to 25 minutes by going the paved route. It wasn't as steep as this morning's climb, so it wasn't too difficult. So we got there with plenty of time before our tour, and then we went up to the gates and into the courtyard 15 minutes before the tour. You can only get in 15 minutes before the tour, and that's when photography had to stop. So we didn't get to actually show you anything of the inside of the castle, except for an incredible view from one of the balconies overlooking the castle down below, a couple of lakes, and just the valley. It was spectacular. So we did book our tickets online in advance. Our tickets were 13 euros each for an English guided tour. It only lasted 30 minutes, but I think it was really great and worth it. We learned from our tour guide that this castle was built in the late 1800s by King Ludwig II, and also that only 30% of the castle was completed. So that is probably why our tour was so short. We just got to see a small part of it, but he apparently had plans for much more of this castle. So this was one of the more ornate castles we've ever seen the inside of. It was beautiful, so colorful, paintings throughout everything. And the throne room was amazing. So another room that we thought was particularly great was the cave room. He liked feeling like he was alone in a cave. So it was really just a room that was, the walls were 
like a cave. Rocks and there was a waterfall in it and color changing lights inside the cave to feel like lightning. Yesterday we also walked around the grounds of the castle Hohenschwangau. This one is the smaller castle that's right next to Neuschwanstein. Often gets overshadowed by it. We didn't go inside, but the grounds were really nice. And it looks like you can buy like a bundle package to tour both of those castles on the website. But whenever I was looking for our tickets, I didn't see that. So Neuschwanstein was the one we mainly wanted to get. So it worked out fine for us. And I will say we've seen quite a few of the big castles in Germany, like Berg Elz or Kokum. And I would say this one definitely holds up. I know this one normally is overrun by tourists and it kind of has that reputation, but we're lucky we're getting to see it right now, but it is incredible. I would definitely recommend seeing it up close and doing the tour. It's a short, small tour, but what we saw was really spectacular. So if you can do it, definitely check it out. Yeah, I think I was expecting it was just going to be a lot of hype and not actually be as cool as it was, but I think it's really worth it and a really great castle. If you have experience coming here and seeing this castle, let us know what your experience was because I am interested in comparing what our experience is now with very few out of the country tourists and maybe what it was like whenever it was overrun by tourists. So leave those in the comments as well. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, please hit that like and subscribe button and we will see you in our next video. Cheers. Check to check, check to check, check, check. Nickelodeon. Wait, how did it fog up so much? <laughs> but now we're on our way to go see Neuschwanstein. Hey! Okay, okay. you're speeding up. <laughs> okay.